Richard Flint, and I want to welcome you to Let's Talk Human Behavior. You know something, folks, for the past 40 plus years, I've dedicated my life to studying human behavior. Contrary to popular belief with some of you, we are all humans. And we're actually defined by our de behavior. The one statement I am known for worldwide are these three words, behavior never lies. The essence of truth is not what you say, it's what you do. In my years of working as a counselor or working with people through my coaching program, I've always explained to them, if you want to know whom you really are, look at your behavior. A person can talk all they want about what they want for their life, but their real truth is seen in their behavior. Now hear me say this, if their words are contradicted by their behavior, then their words are a lie. You are defined by your behavior. On Let's Talk Human Behavior, I'm always searching for guests whose behavior is about creating that positive presence that has a presence when they're not present. You know, and we've shared with you other podcasts that I had, I had the privilege to be a guest on and interviews with people that I've done who have that quality presence that generates continual presence through their commitment to make a difference. Recently, I had the privilege of being a guest on John Bundy's podcast, Morning Fuel. It was there that I met my guest for this episode. John's studio is in his house, and I had the privilege to meet his family. <laughs> the person who was behind the camera standing without any shoes on was John's daughter, Kimberly. We finished the recording and John, Kimberly, and I were just chatting. And I was so impressed with this young lady's confidence, her clarity about her life, her personal presence, that I asked her if she would join me and be a guest on my podcast. I've said this to you many times. I would not want to be a young person growing up today with all the peer pressure. The pressure from society to be what they're seeking to make young people into. Here's a young lady who seems to understand what it means to live from the inside out. Folks, I want to introduce you to my very, very special guest today. A young lady who really impressed me. And those of you who know me know that I am not easily impressed by people but I want you to meet Kimberly Faith Bundy. Kimberly, welcome. And thank you, thank you, thank you for agreeing to spend this time with me. Oh, thank you. I thank you for the time that you are like really willing to open and share with other people. And I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I really did find it interesting that you didn't have any shoes on. <laughs> you told me you love to walk around barefoot. <laughs> I just thought, that was amazing. Yes. <laughs> so, Kimberly, how old are you? I am 16 years old. 16, and what year in school are you? I'm in 11th grade. 11th grade. So you'll have one more year of school. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I really want uh, my listeners to get to know you. So... You know, I've always found it interesting to ask somebody, who are you? Hmm. Who is Kimberly Faith Bundy? Who is she? Hmm. That is a great question. Well, as I said, I'm a 16 year old and I've been surviving high school for the past three years. And um, I am just an entrepreneur for Christ. That's who I am. I'm very outgoing. I can talk up a storm and I can also listen when it's fit for me to listen. Um, I love people and I always try to connect in every way I can, uh, especially around my school and just 
hanging out with friends and going out and about, I try and connect with as many people as I can. And that might mean just sharing a smile. I love, I love smiling. I, I feel like that uh, character on Elf, like smiling, smiling is my favorite. Um, and I just, I love being real because that's the hardest part about being uh, in this world today is just being real. And I feel like if I try and put myself out there and be real to other people, then other people will notice that, hey, I can be real too and I can be genuine. And yeah, that's, that's who I am. Is it tough to be real in today's world as a young person? It is. It's a little tough because, I mean, I feel like we've been thrown all these curveballs of who people, like, who people are, in quotations. Some people don't really show their true selves, especially on, for example, Instagram or some other social media websites. You see they're, they are not really giving their true colors and their true presence. They're just doing what other people think they should do and want them to do and I feel like that's not needed in our world we need unique people we need original people do you feel you're an original I think so I try I try and be as original as I can and genuine um and I like I said you have to be genuine and original in this world and I really enjoy the fact that you are an original person as well because you you told me uh in my dad's podcast that yeah I like to wear clothing that expresses my originality and mm -hmm. I like to wear a smile that expresses my originality and just sharing love and words of affirmation to anybody I touch is it easy for you to smile it is it is really easy for me to smile. I don't, I don't know. Even in the toughest situations, I always crack, crack a joke or I try and say, hey, there, yes, it's a difficult situation right now, but what can we find in this situation that is going to make us happy? Like, even if it's a small dance party in the middle of our living room, something that makes us happy and just makes us smile and laugh. You know, you, you said when you were talking about yourself, and I, I think I, I got the words right, uh, that Kimberly is an ambassador for Christ. Yes, yes, sir. What does that mean? Well, I try my best every day to go in front of the Bible and just really dive deep into his word. I'm genuinely wanting to each and every day to, to listen and just to really understand who God is. And I feel like, yes, there's, there's a million things I can say about Christ and there's a million things, but I feel like being an ambassador for Christ is just knowing God's word, loving people and loving God himself. And when I carry that out into my everyday, I feel like other people can see that, can experience that wow, she has faith. Wow, she has peace. How can I get that? And I love when people ask me the question, why are you so peaceful when everything is stressful? And I just answer this. I know the peace that surpasses all understanding. And that sometimes I can't fathom, but I'm thankful for. Do you ever have people that uh, don't understand your happiness? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I get questions asked all the time. People just in shock saying, okay, um, you were just throwing a curveball right there and you have so much on your plate. You have a test in three days and you are in track and you, you do so many things. How are you not freaking out? And again, I just know that the person who is my peace and people yes don't understand but I just try and give them my best judgment on the fact that I can achieve peace when times are stressful and they can too so as a 
a young lady who is 16. Do you really have stress? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I just, <laughs> I just try and bite off a little bit more than I can chew as we all do in life. We want to do so many things and experience so many things, but like my dad likes to say, just keep it simple. It doesn't have to be this like grand amount of stuff in your life. You can actually narrow what you want to do in your life, like narrow it down to a few things you love to do and start from there. Are you saying that, the, uh, that Kimberly is human and that sometimes she gets in her own way with all the things she would like to achieve? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, welcome to the world of being human. Yay! <laughs> yeah. I found it interesting that your middle name is Faith. Uh, is, there, is there a story behind that? Oh, yes. I was actually talking with my parents about that this morning. I really didn't know why they called me, like, why my middle name was Faith. I asked them this morning, hey, why, why did you choose Kimberly Faith Bundy? And my dad piped up. He was like, oh, I know the story. <laughs> he said that <laughs> he said that one day when my mom was like, she was kind of contemplating having another kid after my sister. And my dad was really worried about it because we were, he was worried about money and just like the uncertainty of if we do have another kid, what's, what's life going to look like? And he just asked God for faith in just, just faith to have faith in any circumstance. And this circumstance was, was hard. They had to make a decision whether they were going to have another kid or just stick with my sister. And that faith turned out to be me and they my mom and dad told me that my mom was struggling with a middle name for me she had a first name she wanted to call me Nicole Nicole okay mm -hmm. <laughs> but but that didn't turn out because my dad wanted to call me Kimberly after my aunt who passed away when she was seven and he was like oh that's a perfect name Kimberly oh, how about Kimberly Faith? Because we had the faith to have this miracle of a child. And I was, I was just in awe that they, they had so much faith in the process of, of thinking of me and thinking of having me. And I thought that was really awesome. You're 16. Yes, sir. You live in a world that's different than I grew up in, in a world that's probably different than what, uh, your mom and dad grew up in. Uh, when you look at what goes on around you right now, Kimberly, what do you see with other young people around your life who are, you know, your age? What do you see? Yeah, yeah. I see, oh my gosh. Honestly, I see a hunger. I don't know. I see a hunger just to like strive for something something out there a lot of a lot of kids are like I'm missing something and honestly th there's a hunger for for just clarity and peace in our world and I feel like since there's just so many times where we have to to pivot because a crisis happened or in my case um our school caught fire uh, a couple years ago and we had to definitely pivot and move in a different direction and just all those things that built up inside of I, I saw a lot of kids just struggling with trying to find clarity and peace and I, I really believe that modern day kids are struggling with a hunger for just peace peace in mind and I feel like yeah I think that's it it's just it breaks my heart sometimes because other people are like, I can't find a way out. So they just give up. And I believe that that's just 
it's, it's sad because they're missing the opportunity to actually have a peace-filled, amazing life. You know, I am the type of person, I've said this for years, I can, I can walk into a family's home and you give me 10 minutes inside that home without talking to anybody. And I'm pretty good. It's a gift that God has given me uh, about being able to define what that home and what that family is like. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I felt when I walked into uh, your family's home was a, a sense of peace uh, and just a calmness that is there. Uh, would you say that y'all are a close family? Yes, yes, sir. What makes y'all close? Well, we've been through a lot of stuff. First off, um, we've been through, yeah, gosh, we've been through so much. And I feel like we've grown over the years. Yes, we weren't perfect for, um, and we still aren't perfect, but for a while, we definitely weren't perfect. I, I'd always like come home and my mom and dad were having a talk and then it turned into a fight and me and my sister would have to like crawl into our bedroom and we wouldn't talk to each other because we weren't that close because she would always want me out of the room and I would always be like oh, okay I'll just play in the living room or play outside or something like that but I feel like over the years once we've grown in faith as a family our like our family unit and trust has grown so much and our faith in each other as well as the Lord, like our faith in each other has grown because sometimes we just come home frustrated and we wouldn't want to talk to each other. We wouldn't want to tell each other's problems, but now we have this opportunity to really open up and we've opened up so much in the past, like five years, I've seen so much like raw power coming out of our household and I really enjoy that because for a time I just felt like oh I can't I can't talk to anybody but my friends because my parents have always been fighting but now that they they found clarity in Christ I can I can finally speak up to them um, and talk with them and just just share life with them and I think it's very genuine in our house. What do you love the most about your mom? I love that she is, she's very peaceful and she always wants to keep the family together and she always wants to just be, she wants to just be in, in our family and she was just wants to listen and I feel like I've needed that for the past couple of years. I've just needed somebody to listen and she She's given me so much advice, and I, I also love that about her, that she's just a well of wisdom, and she just she doesn't just keep it in. She breathes it out on everybody, and she's also a very helpful person. She always loves to, in any situation, like whenever church calls her, oh, there's a problem, and we need you to come here real quick, she's always there all the time, and she's, yeah, I think I, I got that from her. Because when I was talking to you earlier about, yeah, I, whenever I get stressed, uh, it's always because there's just so much going on. And for the longest time, I had that heart to just help out in the church. And sometimes we get a little hairy. I get really stressed out because there's so much going on. But then I remember, hey, my mom's doing this. She's a rock star at it. Let me learn from her. Let me ask her, hey, what works out best for you? I really like that about her. What do you love the most about your dad? I love that he is very talkative and goofy and he wants to try new things. And I feel like having him as a dad really helps me to be a better person because he reminds me that I can be goofy and silly and that I don't always have to be serious and all about um, getting the best scores or anything like that he, he'd always tell me C's get degrees and <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm a bad student or anything like that but he always tells me to just be goofy don't stress because stress is not going to get you where you want to be and I really 
enjoy that he's just a genuine person who's like he's my best friend and I feel like I've connected with him more over the years than I have with anybody else in my family. What do you think is the number one strength that Kimberly has? Oh. What well, makes what makes Kimberly strong? Because you impress me as being a very inwardly strong person. Mm-hmm. So what do you think makes you strong? Makes me strong. Well, just surrounding myself with people who who are strong. Surrounding myself with people who are wise that I can go up to and ask questions or go up to and cry on their shoulder. Those people who impact lives, I can really just go up to and ask for advice or just help with anything. And I feel like those people help me to be stronger. Okay. Are you particular uh, about who you let into your life? I am. I am. My parents have always told me to not hang around the crowd who just wants to like talk trash about people or who whisper behind other people's backs. I always find myself going towards others who are bubbly and who are excited about life. And I also go towards the people who like feel they're struggling. And I always feel like I'm there to remind them that it's okay to struggle for a little while, but remember that you can come out on top if you just have faith that you can and set goals and be excited about life. And I just love surrounding myself with those kind of people. Are they hard to find, Kimberly? Yes, sir. They are always. I mean, I have this one friend who I've I've been with for like I think it's been eleven years, and she was at always that one friend that I would go to just to giggle with and laugh with and do life with because she's very genuine and kind and excited about life, and she was very hard to find. And I can, I feel like I can't find anybody else like her. And it's just, it's so awesome to do life with those people. Just even just one person can make a difference. Have you had to eliminate people out of your life? Yes, sir. Those I'd say are the hardest moments in my life because I've felt like for so long that, oh, I need to influence them. But then they don't want the influence. So they just put that influence on me. And I feel like I have to let those people go. And for a big chunk of my life, I just cry for, for those people. I just be like, God, why can't I do anything for them? And God would always tell me, just let them go so that I can do a work in them. And honestly, I've let only like a few people go and I'm so thankful for the people I have now because they've made me stronger and shown me that this is what true friendship is supposed to be like. You know, it's interesting, Kimberly, because I think one of the hardest things any of us do in life is to have to remove people from our life. Yeah. And I think it's tough, but I keep going back to when, when Christ would walk into a group of people and he was there and the people didn't want to listen, they, you know, rejected him. And what would he do? He would dust his sandals off and he would walk on. And I think sometimes if, when our heart is real big, we accept people by trying to pull them into our life. And when that happens, we normally get pulled into their life um, rather than them uh, the other way around. I'm a person uh, that every year I have a word uh, that formats my year. And like uh, this year, I really got two. Uh, For the first six months of 2022, uh, my word is strengthen. 
because I think every day we got to be strengthening. And then the second half of the year, uh, my word is my word is going to be letting go, because I think sometimes we hang on when we should let go, and we're never quite sure when to let go. Yeah. Uh, when I when your you and your dad showed me your room and your whiteboard, uh, one of the things I noticed over to the side, uh, to the left of your whiteboard, was the word restoration. And I asked you about that. And you told me that that's pretty much your word for the year. Is that right? Yes, sir. Why? Why restoration? Well, first off, my mom actually struck up that word uh, when we were driving home one day from church. And she was like, I really feel like we need to start this year off with a word. And I really feel like it should be restoration. And I was like, that's it. That's a word. And right now it's become a family word and we're using restoration in our crazy busy life because sometimes we need restoration, especially in our faith, but also in our minds and in our bodies. We need restoration. We need just to step back and realize that we can have those moments to, okay, sit down and just have peace and get restored in the faith and get restored in our bodies and minds so that we can help other people without being gassed out because we're doing everything all the time. And I guess it really also means to me just to learn to let go of a few things, like your word, let go. Um, it's just learn to let go of a few things and be restored in Christ so that you can restore other people in their faith. Does Kimberly have down days? Yes, sir, I do. Is there any certain things that can uh, make Kimberly have a down day? Hmm. Not many things can make me have a down day, but sometimes when my mom is stressed I get really stressed and have a down day or when I start my day off wrong and I miss yoga or miss working out then I don't feel as good and I don't start my day off in the direction that I want it to go because I really feel like and I've walked through this a lot I really feel like the way you start your day off is the way you're going to continue your day um, and I mean, sometimes it's not as true because you can have a good day at the end of the day, but, um, I really genuinely feel like if you start your day off, right, then your day throughout will be good or great. Um, and I really feel like sometimes I, I do sometimes have down days because I'm a regular human being. <laughs> who has a lot of stressful days and stressful mornings, but I genuinely try and get through them as, as good as I can. At 16, is there any one thing that, that stresses you out more than anything else? Hmm. Something that stresses me out more than anything else. Honestly, I think it's just when, when my family is stressed, then I get real stressed. Because when, when you come home from a long day of school or track practice or just like waking up and feeling that stress, because I can, I can feel it. It's icky and I don't like it. I don't like stress. But when that happens, sometimes I just absorb it and I get really stressed. And sometimes I lash out and I don't like it. But sometimes it just happens. How do you pull yourself out of that? How do you pull yourself out of that? Hmm. I really try and talk it out with my family and just be genuine and open with them and saying that I'm having a bad day and what, what advice can you give me or what can we do to, to start our day off better, to end our day off well, what can we do? And sometimes it's just sitting down and talking. Sometimes it's just 
having a breather moment where I read in my room and I try and just knock out the world for a second and really truly get into what God says. And he says that whenever you're stressed in any situation, then come to me and I will give you rest. And I really feel like that's rest in your mind and your spirit and your soul so that you can be restored and then come out really just brushing off the, the ickiness of your day and really saying that, okay, I feel good because I was in the presence of the Lord. I feel good because I found peace in this stressful situation. And yeah. It, it sounds like that faith is more than a middle name for you, that your faith is a part of your foundation for your life, right? Yeah. When, uh, when Kimberly thinks about Kimberly, and I, I know when we were chatting uh, in the studio there, uh, when I was there and we were recording your, your dad's podcast on Morning Fuel, when we finished, when we were chatting, I was asking you, what's, what is Kimberly's dream right now? You're young, you're 16. Uh, your life is going to take a lot of different directions. But what is Kimberly's dream for her life right now? Does she have one? I do. And it's definitely changed over the years. <laughs> like, <laughs> like all dreams do. They, they take some weird turns and go off of paths and come back on. But I feel like my dream, and it's really been my goal for this year, um, is to just seek people and to encourage. I really wanted to be a motivational speaker and also I've always had an eye for designing and just getting to know people and owning my own business. So I really feel like if I am passionate about it, which I am in designing and getting to know people and learning how to be an entrepreneur, which my dad is, and I've always been so curious to how, how I can make my own business and how I can make it successful. And I've learned so much from him that I really, really feel that all that prep preparation is for a reason. And I hope to one day be, be who I have been like learning how to be for the past couple of years. And it's just exciting because I feel like this is what God wants me to do is to motivate and to design. And I hope that he will he will lead me down that path. If not, then maybe on the next podcast, I'll say something totally different. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to design? I want to in do interior designing. I want to uh, help other people maybe around my neighborhood or just around the country to figure out like what they want in their home, what, what colors they want in their house, just Anything that speaks to them will speak to me and I'll put it in their house. That's what I really want to do. If, if the parents of one of your friends came to you and said, Kimberly, help us be a better parent. What would you tell them? help them to be a better parent. I really genuinely feel like that parents nowadays really need to keep reminding their kids that they're loved every day saying, saying I love you and actually like genuinely expressing that. And also keep reminding them whose they are because a lot of kids these days don't know who they are. And it's really frustrating in life when you don't know who you are. And when you don't know there's that there's a greater power that will always be there for you in any circumstance, in any struggle. But some kids don't know that because some parents don't express that. So I guess what I'm saying is parents just really go after your kids and tell them that they are loved, show them that they are loved 
and show them who loves them more than they do, more than you do, parents. Because, I mean, it's, it's crazy that we have a God looking out for us and providing for us and loving us for who we are. We just need to realize that and choose to love him back. You know, I want to take this uh, just a little deeper uh, because a lot of the people we have that listen to uh, Let's Talk Human Behavior, uh, they are parents, are many times their grandparents. And when, when, you're, when your friends, when your sphere of influence group talks about their home are the conversations are the words that come out of their mouth uh do they tend to be more positive or more negative about their home see if you asked me that two years ago i would definitely say that a lot of my friends definitely had crazy weird families that would ground them every couple of weeks just because they didn't like what they dressed how they dressed or just because they were on their phone too much and it was just a lot that they were putting on me and I felt like whoa good gracious I'm glad I don't have this stop there for a minute Kimberly when you say they were putting on you how were they doing what were they doing they kept talking about the negativity that went on in their home and that negativity kind of like shifted onto me and it just felt like this big, huge weight on my shoulders that I felt like I had to carry for them, but I didn't. And realizing that now, wow, I carried a lot of people's weight when I was younger because of how many times they would tell me how bad their life was. So it would make them feel better putting their junk on me. And I felt like I wasn't strong enough, but I feel like now after after living my life for 16 years, I've really learned to just get a little stronger and go around the people that, yes, have hard lives, but they don't complain. They don't, they don't put their junk on me because it'll make them feel better. They have casual conversations with me saying, yeah, I was having a tough day, but I feel like today's going to turn out good because I know that my parents love me, even though they're having a hard time. So, yeah. Do you think that parental love is really important? I do. I really do. And I feel like parents, I don't feel like, I know parents are role models for their kids. And if you set a good example for your kids, they will want to copy that. And vice versa. If you set a bad example for your kids, then they will want to copy that because that's all they know. And it is great to have that setting of knowing as a parent that you're not perfect, but understanding that Yes, you're not perfect, but you can be love for your kids. That is more than enough. That's literally all that kids are asking for these days is to just want, like wanting and searching for love. It seems almost like, Kimberly, that we live in a world today um, where we're, we're so busy, uh, and especially in a world where you have two parents that work and the financial pressure on the family, which uh, is the number one pressure that's out there today. Uh, it, it keeps the family from having a closeness, a togetherness. Uh, do y'all eat meals together? Yes, yes, sir, we do. What is that, how valuable is that to you? What, what happens at a family meal table, table in the Bundy home? Well, sometimes we, we definitely joke around when we're eating, um, but most of the time it's just talking about our day and just sitting down and decompressing because all of us have busy lives, except for my grandma, but that's okay. Um, all of us have busy lives and 
we're just wanting to just like decompress together. And it's just really refreshing sometimes when I get to talk about my day and then just be with my family because that's really important to me. Family, I mean, family has always been important to me. And just to know that you have somebody sitting right next to you, eating with you, sharing life with you and listening to you is really real and raw, especially in our family. Okay. Let's say that Kimberly is now 17 years of age. Okay. She's got another year of wisdom under her belt. And this Kimberly that wants to inspire people, be a motivational speaker, uh, walks out on the stage in front of a thousand young people. And she's there to help them uh, learn about uh, being authentic and not being afraid to be yourself, um, being the original, the authentic you. What tips would you give them? What would you say to them about uh, being uh, authentic? Oh, there's a lot that I could say. And honestly, if I were to go out on stage at 17, or when, when I get to be 17, that would be I mean, definitely a challenge um, mentally and spiritually, but I feel like I would say to find your unique originality, I really feel like everybody needs to begin to look in the mirror differently. Look in your mirror differently every day and remind yourself of a simple truth, and that is you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And that is enough. You don't have to be anybody else. Just be who you were made to be. And that kind of ties in with identity. A lot of kids are struggling with their identity. And truly, I say this, you are beautifully and wonderfully made because God created you that way. And you don't have to hide yourself because you are enough. I like that. Okay. I got one more question for you. I'm ready. You ready? Yes. What would you say are the biggest lessons that in your 16 years, what would you say are the biggest lessons that your parents have taught you? What are the most valuable lessons they've taught you? Ah, oh, it's a great question. <laughs> I feel like the greatest lesson that my parents have taught me throughout my 16 years of life is that I can do and achieve anything if I work at it and have a divine vision and goal and if I have those things, I'll make it far in life because I feel like when I talked about earlier that your parents are role models, my parents really taught that and lived it. They showed me that, yes, we will have struggles in life, but you can still achieve anything if you have struggles. And if you have a goal and a vision for what you want to see next in your life. And honestly, that's why I had my whiteboard out with all the things that I wrote on it. Just reminding oh, There's me. a lot of things on that whiteboard, young lady. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really like whiteboards. So whenever I get in front of one, I just have to fill every space. And those lessons that my parents have taught me throughout the years really showed me that I can set a goal and I can achieve it if I work at it hard and I work at it long enough and I just stay in the game a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Can I make it one more day? If I can give God one more hour of my life, one more day of my life, then I can surely give my goal one more hour, one more day of my life. And that's why I'm so excited about the dreams and the visions that I have for this year, because I know where I'm going. I know where I am headed. And 
yes, there will be times where God wants to do a little path change and that's okay. Because I'm excited about whatever goal and vision that I have, but also whatever goal and vision that God has for me. Okay, you, you, you're forcing me to ask you another question. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, uh, I do a, a, every Friday I, at 10 a.m. in the morning Eastern time, I do an, an open mic where uh, we have a theme, uh, a question for the day. And uh, I do a little opening and then I open the mics and people talk about the question. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the question that was in front of the people was this. When December 31st, 2022 comes around, I would like to be able to say that this is the year that I fill in the blank. Mm. This would be the year that I. Mm. <laughs> putting you on the spot. Yeah, you're putting me on the spot. I like that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I think this would be the year that I really strove to help people to understand their identity in Christ. And also I have a lot of smaller goals, like at the end of this year, I want to be able to read a bunch of books. Um, I think it was 22 books in the year 2022. And at the end of this year, I want to be able to finish my goal of running longer and learning how to breathe better. Cause I mean, I'm a track runner and I have to run long distance and it's really going to be my goal for this year. And honestly, there's so many things I could say, but just to pinpoint one, I would say just to help people to find their true identity. Yeah. If you're comfortable, okay, in doing this, Sure. Uh, because I always ask all of my guests about this. Um, many times when I when I finish an uh, an interview like this, uh, and you are the youngest person I've ever interviewed on Let's Talk Human Behavior, oh. you have you have wisdom, and you have presence that's beyond your years. But let's say that there uh, there are some young people that are listening to this. And they say, you know what? I, I'd like to be able to ask her a question. Is there a way that uh, a young person could reach out and, and reach you? Oh, definitely, definitely. I feel like the best way is to just reach out to me on Instagram. Um, it's at Kim Abides underscore. Just DM me, text me, message me. I'm always here to answer questions and I always post on my stories that I am open. I'm an open book. You can tell me your struggles and we can try and get through them together. All right. Give me the Instagram one more time. Cause I didn't, I didn't grab it. No worries. At Kim abides underscore. Kim abide. Abides. A B I D E. S. Okay, we're going to put that in there. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for making yourself available tonight. And thank you for your wisdom. Oh, uh, thank you. You know, you have, you have wisdom beyond that of a 16-year-old. And someday someone will probably tell you that you, you are like an old soul. Uh, but don't ever, don't ever stop challenging yourself. You, you have some pretty pretty good ideas of what you want. You have some strong dreams. And that's what we need in young people today. We need young people today who don't have to follow the crowd. Because another thing that I always liked when I, when I, I studied the life of Christ is that he was always able to walk in the midst of the crowd, but not be the crowd. Mm, that's good. And that to me is the ability to have a presence that is present when you're not present. Yeah. 
And I think, young lady, I think you definitely have that. And again, I want to thank you for joining me this evening and sharing this with me. And I'm hopeful that there'll be some young people out there that will uh, reach out to you. Yes. And maybe you'll be able to have an impact on, on their life. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, Kim. And thank you all for being a part and being a part of our Let's Talk Human Behavior this evening. And we will look forward to the next time uh, that we have a chance to get together on Let's Talk Human Behavior. <laughs>